Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the weekly report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The water is splashing and spraying in Kansas City's fountains once again. The Parks Department celebrated Fountain Day at Concourse Fountain in Kessler Park this year. Those in attendance took part in lawn games, enjoyed musical entertainment, and had their pick of festival food offerings from several food trucks. This year's celebration also marked the 125th anniversary of the Kansas City Parks and Recreation Department. Good evening everybody, it's really good to be here with you. It's one of my uh, favorite events of the year because it really does mark the beginning of spring in my mind when we uh, turn on the fountains and it's a good time to come and celebrate all the good things that have happened uh, with our parks department and our fountains and the work that they're doing. Again, 125 years of our parks department. And I think they've done about as good of 125 years as any parks department in this country has or could possibly do. You know, these, uh, these parks uh, that contain fountains really do speak to who we are as Kansas Cityans. We treasure our art. We treasure our culture, we treasure our beauty, we treasure the parks and the fountains that are in them. Uh, we're going to continue to work to make sure that each and every park and each and every fountain uh, continues to be top grade, top drawer. And uh, I want to thank you all for supporting the bond issue uh, that will help us do some of that work. Five, four, three. KC Moore, the city's award-winning magazine for residents, has just released a spring edition. The latest issue includes feature articles on the Human Relations Department, sustainable construction by the Public Works Department, and the new Mental Health Triage Center, and much more, of course. The twice-yearly magazine, produced by the City Communications Office, is mailed to more than 100,000 residents. An online version is also available by visiting kcmo.gov and searching KC Moore. Residents may also request a copy by calling 311. And be sure to mark your calendar for Saturday, May 6th at 11 a.m. Join us at Union Station to celebrate the first birthday of the Kansas City streetcar. Since voters approved the streetcar project, the downtown area has seen almost $2 billion in economic development projects, and that is a milestone worth celebrating. Now let's check out what else is happening in our city departments. What this building offers is a consolidation of ways that we can bring all the services together the veterans need in one place to help them. So they have a central location where they can come, uh, other than just the VA, to provide social services, um, support, and even housing is, is a huge benefit to the community. It's going to add the ability to have services provided to the uh, veterans that are living in the tiny homes across the street. It will also provide an opportunity, there's a space for building the houses that will also allow veterans to help out and build the tiny houses as well. This project has been uh, iconic as far as I'm concerned. A group of young veterans decided they were going to do something about homelessness for vets uh, regardless of age or regardless of service. So they got together and decided they would just get it done. And I'm telling you, I just try to stay out of their way because they're moving all the time. Some of these community members have lived here for 30 or 40 years and they're just, I mean, they're stoked. They think we're adding value to the community. They've seen what we've done with this building and they feel like we're revitalizing a piece of their neighborhood. You know, this building sat vacant for quite a while and they just love what we're doing. The reality is, is without the city, we wouldn't be here. They're just instrumental in everything. We're here at Lakeside Nature Center today and uh, we're getting to do something pretty fun here in Parks and Rec. We are having a controlled burn. Um, every year at Lakeside Nature Center and the other park, some of the other parks around the area like uh, Jerry Smith and Minor Park, we do this controlled burn. What it is, we have Remnant Prairie that we've been working on for a very long time to bring back into Missouri. 
and every year we have to burn it. What this does is it, it burns out all the woody shrubs that are trying to take over and all the undesirable grasses and things we don't want in there. And it allows the native forbs and the native grasses to come back every year. Now what we're striving for is, uh, like I said, the native prairie that we've lost most of it in the state. So we have these small patches around Kansas City that Parks and Rec has helped rebuild. And uh, with the help of Missouri Department of Conservation as a partner, we uh, uh, burn them every year. It's kind of fun to get out here and uh, just be out on the outside and have some fun. You likely saw the headlines and photos on March 27th. Water main break shuts down KC streetcar. Flooding reported, streetcar service suspended. That afternoon, a 130-year-old 10-inch water main burst. Despite the amount of rushing water and torn up road, no customers were left without water. That's thanks to working valves. We were able to close the two closest valves which, and isolate the water main, which limited anybody from being out of water. Not too long ago, it was a coin toss whether a valve worked. In 2011, just over half the valves in the city were operable. After five years of working with Walks Water Services, a private company that specializes in valve asset management, that figure climbed significantly to 84%. Casey Water recently started another five-year contract with Walks to continue that momentum. Also assigned to checking valves are Casey Water maintenance workers Tony Hammonds and Yusuf Aladpio. What we do is, uh... We come out here, clean it out, exercise it, see if it's broken or anything like that, and then after we, after we service it, come back, you know, we write it up. They'll never not have anything to do. There are more than 35,000 valves across the city, seven in just this one intersection. These valves control the water that's flowing through 2,800 miles of underground water mains. Well, the more valves we have in the water system, the better chance we have to make smaller shuts, which will help people, less people be out of water. This work is another example of KC Water's continuing commitment to improve the infrastructure of Kansas City. For KC Water, I'm Brooke Givens. Comida KC is the only Latin American culinary event in Kansas City, and it happens on April 20th at Union Station, and it is supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. Here to tell us all about the event is Eric Negrete, who is the creator of the Comida KC concept. Eric, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us about the event. What is the purpose of the event, and how did you come up with the idea of Comida? Um, the purpose of, of Comida is to help fundraise um, scholarships for our student programs through the Hispanic Chamber and the Hispanic Collaborative. Um, the way it came about was just identifying Kansas City as a Mexican-centric city um, because there's so many cultures and diversity within the Latin and Hispanic communities. I thought it was important to help educate the community at large through our foods, our, our music, our, our drinks. And so this was just a fun way to help do some good for our student programming and feed, feed the masses. <laughs> Well, this year, like in years past, this is the fourth time that you're having the event. You have the participation of pretty renowned local chefs. How many chefs are participating this year? And can you give us an idea of what types of dishes they'll be preparing? Mm -hmm. um, we, this year, we have 17 local chefs and restaurants. Um, and we have one international visiting chef coming from Puerto Rico. That's Chef Mario uh, Pagan. Uh, but we also have, you know, chefs like Michael Smith, uh, Patrick Ryan, uh, uh, Howard Hanna, um, smaller restaurants or uh, community restaurants such as Anita's Cuisine and Teo Kali. So the chefs and restaurants have selected either prov provinces in Mexico as well as other Latin and Hispanic countries and each chef and restaurant will select a couple dishes from that country or province and create re either recreate them or create them traditionally 
and their serving, uh, their tastings. So out of 18 chefs, we have two bites each. So there's gonna be 36 different items to experience at the event. And with all of these items, we're gonna get awfully thirsty. So there's also the participation of mixologists, correct? Absolutely. Tell us about them. We have eight mixologists who also have selected a country. And from that country, they'll do a typical or traditional cocktail. Uh, so you'll have the eight mixologists, the 18 chefs. We also have Mirancho Tequila, who's sponsoring a tequila tasting. And Sava is uh, going to furnish the sham uh, cava and a wine bar. So a lot, a lot of fun. Plus live music, we'll have bands, dancing. It's a great, it's a great evening to have some fun and again, to do some good for our students. How many people do you anticipate coming this year? This year we're expecting over 800 oh my guests. Goodness. And where do they all come from? From all over the United States. We have guests who are coming, flying in for the event and most of whom are coming from the seven counties uh, surrounding KC Metro. And if people wanted to find out more about the event or purchase tickets, where would they go? Um, we have a website, comidakc.com. Uh, you can purchase tickets there, get more information. You can also read about our chefs and mixologists uh, and see the various countries that everybody's representing or uh, provinces from Mexico. And speaking of chefs, today we are in one of the chef's restaurants, Michael Smith, who is here to share with us what he's presenting this year at Comida Casey and who is a veteran chef of the event. He has participated all four times. So congratulations on that accomplishment. We can't say no to Eric Negrete. Of course not, <laughs> of course not. What do you have for us today? So my country, Honduras, um, most countries in, in Latin America serve some sort of ceviche, raw fish kind of preparation, uh, cooked in citrus. And so here we've done sea bass um, with radishes. The spring radishes are happening right now. Cilantro, um, pickled cherry peppers, uh, a little bit of onion, and then served with some chips, various chips, taro root chips. Uh, there'll be tortilla chips also, as well as um, plantain chips. Wonderful. It looks delicious. And thank you for sharing this with us and for your participation in all four years. You're welcome. And for hosting us today in your re lovely restaurant. And Eric, thank you for educating, not just um, not just having a fundraiser for educational purposes, but for educating the general public about Latin American culture and food. And you're also counting on the participation of Spain. So thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area. To learn about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov slash ntdf.
If saving some green is part of your spring plans, don't forget the annual Show Me Green sales tax holiday. During the week of April 19th through 25th, and depending upon where you buy Energy Star qualified appliances, you could receive significant savings. City, county, and state sales tax exemptions may add up. For more information, visit our website at kcmo.gov. The city's spring curbside leaf and brush pickup continues in the Northland during the week of April 17th. South Zone pickup takes place the week of April 24th. Remember, you may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on your curb on your regular trash pickup day. This city service helps you with your yard work and remember that raking up leaves keeps them from clogging catch basins in our streets and protects pipes. Also, the city's leaf and brush drop-off sites are now open. The sites are located at 11660 North Main, 1815 North Choteau Trafficway, and 10301 Raytown Road. Drop-off is free to residents on Saturdays with identification. For more information about Leaf and Brush, visit kcmo.gov and search Leaf and Brush. If you have some items that need to be recycled, but they aren't part of the city's curbside program, you know, the blue bins, well, we have another city service that will help. The city's annual Hard to Recycle event takes place Saturday, April 22nd from 8 a.m. to noon. It's right across the street from the Manual Technical Career Center, which is located at 1320 Truman Road. Accepted items include electronics, mattresses, building materials, and much more. For a complete list of accepted items, go to our website at kcmo.gov. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, just go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel, and there you can find all of our programs that you can view on demand. I'm Chris Hernandez. Enjoy the weather out there. Have a great week.